In this edition of Detroit Performs, an artist explores the idea of identity, personally and cosmically, through his paintings and sculptures. When I speak Arabic, people say, oh, you have an accent. And when I speak English, they said, you have an accent. But I tell them when I draw, I have no accent. And I feel art is a universal language. Critic Card Detroit shares a review on the art exhibit, Inhabitation. Uh, the show, Inhabitation, is about, uh, well, features a variety of different takes on domesticity. An actress shares her inner thoughts as she steps on stage. But it's your ego. Your ego is, uh, is your worst enemy but also your biggest ally in this industry because if you don't have a thick skin, you won't make it. And the Knight Foundation People's Choice Awards Challenge. We'll be able to service and repair bikes and also help people learn how to fix their bikes. And we're just trying to better our situation. It's all ahead in this edition of Detroit Performs. Major funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the McGregor Fund. Additional funding is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to Detroit Performs. I'm your host, DJ Oliver, and I'm gonna take you through Detroit's very unique Museum of Contemporary Art, also known as MOCAD. Architect Andrew Zago converted MOCAD from a former auto dealership alongside Woodward in Midtown. Now the architecture is intentionally raw and unfinished to mimic its surroundings. Now the front definitely piques my interest as to what's exhibited inside. So while I head inside the museum, you can check out our first artist, whose art embodies what MOCAD stands for. Artist Adnan Chirara owns a vast studio in Detroit, where he creates Picasso-like paintings and attention-grabbing sculptures. You know, how uh, quickly when you were a kid, uh, you know, the first time you grabbed that pencil and you just express yourself and you just wanted to draw and, and show this uh, emotion and, and, and your feeling. Adnan grew up in Lebanon and Sierra Leone and came to the United States for college. I came to the U.S. at the age of 19 and to study architecture and city planning. But and uh, knowingly that I wanted to be an artist. His vast studio is a repository of art and materials of his art, found objects which inspired his playful exploration of identity. When I speak Arabic, people say, oh, you have an accent. And when I speak English, they said, you have an accent. But I tell them when I draw, I have no accent. You know, and, uh, and I feel art is a universal language. And, and that's what I try to also draw in my art. You know, like a guy with a big nose or a square body or something. It symbolizes everybody. It doesn't matter where you come from, what color it is, or, or uh, you know, we all have feelings. We all have the same tears. We all have the same laughters and happiness. But I have a purpose with my art. I'm not trying to tell them, oh no, change your mind or something. Just look and find your way. I studied architecture and but I knew I always wanted to be an artist. And I did this thing, it's the same thing as like, this is the hammer that wanted to be a conductor, it wanted to be a musician. Oh, you see, this is to me as the immigrant coming to America. I came with my knowledge, with uh, everything to better my knowledge, but also to give. Eight months later, At9 built a new studio in Midtown Detroit. After uh, living in um, uh, Michigan for about well, now 14 years, I definitely felt that this is the place I have to be. As an Arab American, I feel this is my home, my my place where I can create something new to add, the, you know, to the fabric and make it a tighter fabric, a better fabric, more colorful. be an Arab American, you know, I have a base that uh, 
I can tap into and it's endlessly to have a great culture and everything and, and I can give something good. It's about to show people that don't be afraid to say who you are because you're only lying to yourself. All my life I wanted to be an artist and I am an artist and I always be an artist and, and I want to create a, a studio where I can interact with others and also I very well connected with uh, Detroit and I feel with the industrial, with the struggle. Just like my found objects that the things I create, I felt that uh, people use those tools and they, they think that they don't have any more use for it because something new is in, in the market or things like that and then I give them this whole new rebirth. So and I, I felt that's what Detroit is. It's uh, uh, you could be an artist and you can voice your own voice. Um, I just found these uh, recently in an estate sale and uh, as soon as I picked them up, I, I could see like, you know, a man screaming. Uh, but that's like at the beginning, both of them, like these two old men that have been tired sitting in a box and waiting for so long for somebody to come and pick them up. And, uh, and I was so excited to get them. These are the starting po point. I mean, this is a world I try to create. Here, as you can see, the melancholy hammer that uh, I built from found objects. And it, uh, although itself is, uh, it, it's very, uh, effective to show uh, what I'm trying to portray, uh, but it wasn't enough for me. I wanted to create the character and show the character in a, in a much more deeper and heavier meaning. So I don't know where it, it, it takes me. This is just a beginning, a beginning of putting something together and, and forming an identity, a new identity. Uh, but yet it was taken from a past. And I feel like these things uh, were gonna be thrown out. And same thing like also an immigrant, you know, like he comes first to a country, whether they run away from war or they run away because of c certain political turmoil or whatever it is, or coming for education or something they end up taking the harder jobs, they end up moving forward and they, and they grow and they give something. So, and that's the same thing. I had to like take these objects and build them up and now they, I have a character and from this character I can draw them or they become a monumental sculptures. This is a, an identity thing. It's, a, it's a, me creating a, the subject and yet giving it a chance and looking at it in many, many different angles and, and working with it and, and build on it. So it's all coming from the self and, and from seeing things around and, and translate and retranslate it so people, the audience can look at it in a whole new way. Most important thing I find out is like, you cannot hide behind your finger. You are, you are who you are. And <laughs> my wife always tell me, what's that mean? I said, well, you know, you really cannot hide behind your figure. And that's the, the truth. You just uh, be yourself, be truly yourself, because you live within yourself and, you know, be proud of who you are, because that's when you're going to give truly the most. And, and that, once I recognized that more, I realized how quickly uh, I form an identity, how quickly I, I started to be myself and, and something new. And that's really what I want to show people that no matter where they come from, um, to don't give up and uh, to keep seeking and looking because life is so beautiful.
For more information on Ad9 Chirara and all the artists you'll see featured here today, visit DetroitPerforms.org. Now, part of MOCAD's mission is to fuel crucial dialogue, and this exhibit here, called Inhabitation, does just that, urging the viewer to question existing biases and assumptions about what the idea of home truly means. That these next Credit Card Detroit Citizen reviewers help to explain the Inhabitation Showcase a little further. Hi, my name is Greg Tom, and I'm the gallery director at Eastern Michigan University, and I'm also the curator for Inhabitation. Um, the uh, show runs through July 28th, and uh, features uh, three artists, Matt Kenyon, Osman Khan, and uh, Jason Ferguson. Um, they're all professors, either in Ipsy or in Ann Arbor, um, and uh, the show Inhabitation is about, uh, well, features a variety of different takes on domesticity or the home. It's paired with the excellent exhibit by Mike Kelly, uh, Mobile Homestead, which is also here at MOCAD, uh, till July 28th. You can view more of Credit Card Detroit Citizen Reviews on their Facebook page and YouTube channel, which you can find through DetroitPerforms.org. And joining me now is the Curator of Education for MOCAD, Katie McGowan. How are you, Katie? Great, thanks. All right. Now, we want to talk about the Inhabitation exhibit. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, Inhabitation is an exhibition of, of local artists, actually. Two professors from the University of Michigan and one from Eastern Michigan, and curated by uh, Gregory Tom, who's a local curator. And it's a show that deals with issues of domesticity and uh, household life. Okay. And it relates to our uh, other uh, spring opening, the Mike Kelly Mobile Homestead. Okay. Now, a lot of our viewers are probably wondering, how does MOCAD differ from the DIA? MOCAD is very different from the DIA. The DIA is a comprehensive museum, okay. and so they collect all different kinds of art. MOCAD, on the other hand, specializes in contemporary art, mm. uh, which is usually art made in the last 30 years. And so we actually are a non-collecting institution, and we're able to operate um, and respond to trends in contemporary art more easily. All right, so what would you say is MOCAD's mission to the city of Detroit? Our mission is to bring to the, the people of Detroit uh, contemporary artwork from emerging and established American and international artists. Okay, I like that. What kind of events does MOCAD hold here each year? MOCAD has tons of public programs. We have uh, an extensive music series. We have lectures, artist talks, tours, family days, workshops. We're launching a teen council in the fall, which is a big initiative. We have tons of public programming um, that goes that operates on a seasonal basis. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about some of the ideas you have for the fall coming up with MOCAD. On Friday, September 6th, our fall exhibition opens, which is a really exciting one. The show is called The Past is Present, and it's curated by Jens Hoffman. And it's an exhibition for which we've invited uh, 15 artists to create murals, full-size murals, that relate to specific scenes in Detroit's history. Mm, hopefully you'll get me here too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well thank you, Katie. I appreciate that insight. Thank you. All right, now here's a look at some upcoming events happening around Detroit. You may think I have left MOCAD, but I have not. I'm standing with an artist, Mike Kelly's final public project, Mobile Homestead, which is a full-scale replica of the artist's childhood suburban home. Kelly conceived the project to express his ideas about having to suppress his true desires behind a socially acceptable facade. 
Our next segment features actress Vanessa Swanson, who is a Michigan native and resident of Ferndale. Now, she has been in more than 10 productions at the Hillbury Theater in Detroit and appeared on many other Metro Detroit stages. Here, she talks about her deepest thoughts and what acting means to her. You can give everything that you have to give, and when you're a kid, they say, just try your best, because that's all you can do, is just try your hardest. In this industry, trying your best means nothing. Uh, you can try your best, and you can feel so great about that, but there is always going to be someone that is better than you. And until you can overcome that with more training or uh, more perspective, you're kind of just, you're, you're stuck being who you are. I, I, I beat myself up a lot. I have a lot of, uh, a hard time with accepting the fact that I'm not perfect. And I know that sounds silly, um, but it's your ego. Your ego is, uh, is your worst enemy, but also your biggest ally in this industry because if you don't have a thick skin, you won't make it. Um, but I also have a fantastic little brother that comes to my house and spends hours and hours with me uh, memorizing my lines, helping me. He makes me say my, my lines in my own words so I know what I'm talking about, which helps. So he's very good at this. <laughs> uh, I have a boyfriend of 12 years and he's a wonderful man. I lost my mother when I was 23 and I lost my father when I was 11. So he has been my rock for 12 years. The hardest role I've played was Lois in Dr. Bob and Bill W. And she was a 40 year old woman married to an alcoholic. Um, but during the production, my uncle passed away who was unfortunately battled with uh, alcohol and drugs. And his funeral was at five so I had enough time to finish my first show, go to his funeral, and watch his children bury their father over a disease that I was performing a play about. I had no problem performing that show. All the emotion was real and it was there. Uh, but I knew I had a job to do and I felt like I wasn't just saying the words for the audience, but for the world and for myself and for my uncle and it was, uh, it was quite amazing. I felt like I grew a lot after that show because I went from not knowing anything to knowing so much. After the show is over at the Hillberry, when you're yourselves again and you're walking backstage and everyone's walking through this big long hallway behind the, the stage, all walking, getting ready to go out that night or what they're gonna do, finish their homework. And it's just a moment for me to, that is my, one of my favorite moments every evening of we're just these people who put on costumes and tell stories. This is, this is what we do. And it's just, it's a magical moment. Check out DetroitPerforms.org for more information on Vanessa Swanson and all the artists you'll see featured here today. Now next up, we have a very special segment, the Knight Foundation's People's Choice Award. Here are the five Arts Challenge nominees. Welcome survivors. You complex Movements Collective represents the idea today. of the connection between complex science and social movements. Um, we're taking hip hop performance, uh, this amazing storyline um, that Invincible has been working on, uh, the sound, the visuals, and essentially creating like an immersive experience. The funding would help us turn a pod into a rocket ship and bring this rocket ship into your community and then have this experience knock your socks off. <laughs> 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 We hope that the participants engage with the piece and as they experience this journey, that they start to apply its lessons to their everyday lives and to the way that they work for change in their own communities. orchestra bike rides, we do stuff in the community. We do angel night, we'll be riding around and patrolling streets. In this neighborhood, the kids come 
And they, oh, can you fix my bike? No, you gonna fix your bike. We gonna show you how we take our time and show them how to do it. You just don't get one of these shirts and you don't, you have to do community service because you won't get one of our shirts. I'm trying to get this building right now so we can open the building up and, and get out of the house. That, that way we can service the community better far as like it's no bike store from the river walk to like nine and a half mile road. So we'll be like in the middle. We'll be able to service and repair bikes and also help people learn how to fix their bikes. And we just trying to better our situation all in the same time with, with everybody else it help also. Lo and Behold Records and Books is a publishing house and a storefront as well. We put out records and books. Folk Blues Night, and it's a, it's, a, it's a musical series. It's a monthly musical series. Performers will come to sit in, but there's also performers that are invited. We record them with um, some old ribbon microphones. We've been putting, a, putting them up for free download uh, with the intention of saving money that way and then putting out a series of LPs. The, the money would go toward, well, I need some renovation work in this space and upkeep on some of the gear too, the recording gear and stuff like that. I'd put a little into that, I'd allocate money for the performers and then um, the rest would go toward just hammering out recordings. I'm really committed to this neighborhood and Hamtramck in general. It's, um, there's a lot of potential, I think, for this neighborhood. Our organization is the Mount Elliott Makerspace, and it's a village workshop for making, tinkering, and learning as a way to strengthen community so that people can have the skills, knowledge, and whatever they need to create happier lives for themselves. Our idea is a hyper-interactive hip-hop Mardi Gras parade. So the idea is to combine forces with a couple other groups around the city that we've wanted to work with for a while. Ralph Taylor of Caribbean Mardi Gras has been doing the parade and festival for some time, and we think combining our work with uh, lights and gadgets and sound could make his outfits and his performance more amazing. And then also bringing in the 5E Gallery and their skill with uh, music and performance and visual arts will also continue to augment and make the event more amazing. I think this project will positively impact the community because it it's, gives us the opportunity to bring three diverse, amazing groups together with complementary skills. I really think would generate a lot of optimism and uh, create some positive memories that I hope will continue to be generated year after year as the event continues. about the people who live here and about our lives. Our mission and purpose is to connect humanity, heal and transform community, and provide an uplifting, thought-provoking, soul-cleansing entertainment experience that's unique through the art and craft of storytelling. And nobody! What we want is support in expanding this effort and this model. It's already connecting humanity, it's healing and transforming community, and people are coming to these storytelling events, okay, and the vendors are selling their products out, and it's getting a synergy and an energy in Detroit. I want to change the story of blight and tragedy and, uh, and, and, and turn it into these glorious stories. When you see the, the audience and you see how they rise up and they're mm -hmm, and they're it's a, a different energy than the, the the statistics because behind every statistic is a human being and their story i'm just saying don't move to southfield in a little box stay in your house in detroit because in three years you're gonna ride by your house go damn 
should have stayed in that house. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Performs. For more information on arts and culture, visit DetroitPerforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information on upcoming arts events. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, too. Now, we'd like to thank the Museum of Contemporary Art for letting us explore here today. Don't forget to get out there and discover it for yourself. Until next time, get out there and show them how Detroit performs. I am DJ Oliver. Thanks for watching, guys. Major funding for Detroit Performs is provided by the McGregor Fund. Additional funding is provided by the Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs and the National Endowment for the Arts. And by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.